Today we will discuss the topic of delays. Delays in VLSI is a very complex and confusing topic. Delays have different purpose uh, when it comes to design and test bench use cases. Today we will discuss the details on how to handle delays from design and test bench use case. This is the first kind of delays, which is the inertial delay. Inertial delay models only uh, propagate signals to an output after the input signals have remained unchanged or being stable uh, for a time period equal to or greater than the propagation delay of the model. If the time between two input changes is shorter than a procedural assignment delay, a continuous assignment delay, or a gate delay, a previously scheduled but unrealized output event is replaced with a newly scheduled output event. In the following slides, we will uh, discuss and also look at the waveforms, how this behavior is attained. Uh, a typical example of an inertial delay is a combinatorial logic delay uh, or a cell delay. The next type of delays that we'll discuss is the transport delay. Transport delay model propagates all signals to an output after an input signal changes. The scheduled output value changes are skewed for transport delay models. An example of the transport delay is the interconnect wire between the logic gates. In this slide, uh, let's discuss the blocking assignment delay. Um, so when we uh, type one of the blocking assignment delay is adding delays to the left hand side of sequential of any sequence of blocking assignments to model combinatorial logic. Here the example is an adder code uh, which has an input x, y and carry input. And we have added the delay of pound 12 on the LHS of this assignment statements. Uh, if you simulate and look at the waveforms here, um, the outputs should be updated 12 nanoseconds after the input changes. If the X input changes at time 15, then if X, Y, C, I inputs all change during the next nine nanoseconds after the 15, the outputs will be updated with the latest value of X, Y, and C, I at time 27. This modeling style has just permitted the CI input change to propagate to output after just three nanoseconds, which is not the right behavior of the hardware. In this slide, uh, we took the same adder example and uh, slightly modified the code so that the assignment is happening in two steps. The first step is uh, calculating the value of the addition and putting it in a temporary variable variable with a delay on the LHS. And then in the next step, we assign the LHS value to the outputs. Uh, the behavior of the waves uh, are the same, where we can see that the output is changed at time 27 and, and the latest change on the CI is at 24. So the difference between them is three nanoseconds, which does not match the actual hardware requirement, which is 12 nanoseconds. This example, we modified the code to, uh, to have the delay on the second statement. Uh, so we, we calculate the value of uh, add addition in a temporary variable and then assign the temporary variable with the LHS delay of pound, two, of pound 12 nanoseconds. So when we simulate it, this code will sample the inputs on the first input change and assign the outputs to a temporary location until after completion of the specified blocking delay. Then the outputs will be written with the old temporary output values that are no longer valid. Other input changes within the 12 nanosecond delay period will not be evaluated. That means the old RNS values will remain on the output until more input changes occurs. So in conclusion, when designing the RTO, uh, when doing the RTO design for the design, do not place delays on the LHS of blocking assignments to model the combinational logic. When writing the test bench, placing delays on the LHS of the blocking assignments in a test bench is reasonable since the delay is just being used to time space sequential input stimulus event. Next is the type two of blocking assignment delays. Here we are adding delays to the right hand side of blocking assignments to model combinational logic delays. Um, 
So here, in this assignment, we added bound to a delay on the RH side to model the uh, permitted logic delay. Uh, when we simulate this, the output should be updated 12 nanoseconds after the input changes. If X input changes at time 15, the RHS input values will be sampled and the output will be updated with the sampled values, while all other X, Y, and the CI input changes during the 12 nanosecond window will not be evaluated. This means old erroneous values on the inputs will remain on the outputs until more input changes occur. In this slide, I'm showing the more um, variations of type two, uh, of the type two way of uh, adding delays to the RHS of the blocking assignments. So on the left side, uh, added the pound 12 delay, uh, split the assignment into two, and then add the result in a temporary variable, and then assign the temporary variable in the next statements. And so on the right hand side, we did the same thing, but shifted the pound 12 delay to the to the next line. So the same uh, when we simulate this, the same problem exists with multiple blocking assignments when delays are placed on the RHS of the assignment statements. So in conclusion, uh, when designing RT, when doing the RTL design for the design, do not place uh, delays on the RHS of blocking assignments to model and combinational logic. Uh, when, when writing test bench, do not place delays to, on the RHS of the blocking assignments on the test bench also. Next is the non-blocking assignment delays. So here we are adding delays to the LHS of non-blocking assignments. So the example code of an adder, and, and here, here we have a non-blocking assignment, and we added a pound 12 delay on the LHS side. So the behavior of this logic um, is similar to the behavior that we have seen before. Um, if the X input changes at time 15, then if X, Y, and C, A, all of them change in the, in the next uh, future times, um, the output will be updated with the latest value of X, Y, and C, I at time 27. This modeling style permitted the C, I input to propagate a value to the outputs after only three nanoseconds. So this behavior is flawed and it does not uh, represent, uh, represent the actual gate behavior. So the conclusion is, when designing the RTL, do not place delays on the LHS of non-blocking assignments. Um, uh, for the test bench, non-blocking assignments are usually less efficient to simulate than the blocking assignments. So placing delays on the LHS of non-blocking assignments for modeling or the test bench generation is generally discouraged. Let's discuss the type two of non-blocking assignment delays. Here we are adding delay on the R on the right hand side of non-blocking assignments. So in our example adder, we added the pound 12 delay on the right hand side of this non-blocking assignment statement. So once we, when we simulate it, you can see that the behavior is different now. Uh, if the input, uh, if the X input changes at time 15, then all inputs will be evaluated and new output values will be queued for assignment 12 nanoseconds later. After, immediately after the outputs have been queued, uh, but not yet assigned, the always block will again be set up to trigger on the next input event, this always block. This means that all input events will queue new values to be placed on the output after a 12 nanosecond delay. So all the changes in the inputs are all queued to be propagated to the output after 12 nanoseconds of each change. This coding style will model combination logic with the transport delay. So in conclusion, uh, when doing the design, delay on the RHS of non-blocking assignments uh, will model transport delay output propagation behavior. This coding style will uh, accurately model delay lines and combination logic with pure transport delays. But um, these uh, simulations are run slower because of the non-blocking assignment delays. Uh, when designing the test bench, um, 
This coding style is often used in test benches when stimulus must be scheduled on future clock edges or after a set delay, while not blocking the assignment of subsequent stimulus events in the same procedural block. This is a continuous assignment delay. So in our example adder, we have an assigned statement with a delay of pound 12 on the LHS. Um, on the LHS. Once we simulate this, um, this code, you can see the, the waves on the right side show the behavior of a combinatorial logic delay of a gate. Of a gate. The first uh, input exchange occurs at uh, time 15, which causes an output event to be scheduled at time uh, 27. Right? But a change on Y at 17 and two more changes right, like on X at 19 and 21 respectively cause three new output events to be scheduled. Only the last output event actually completes and the outputs are assigned at time 33, which is right here. Continuous assignment assignments do not queue up output assignments. They only keep track of the next output value and when it will occur. Therefore, um, continuous assignment model, combinatorial logic with inertial delays. So in conclusion, uh, when doing the design, you can use the continuous assignment with delays to model simple combinatorial logic. This coding style will accurately model combination logic with inertial delays. Um, you can use always blocks with no delays to co model complex combinational logic that are more easily uh, implemented using behavioral constructs such as case, case Z, case X, if else, etc. The outputs from the no delay always blocks can be driven into continuous assignment to apply behavioral delays to the models. This coding style will accurately model complex combinational logic with inertial delays. When, when writing the test bench, continuous assignments can be used anywhere in the test bench to drive stimulus values onto input ports and bidirectional ports of instantiated models. So in conclusion, any delay added to statements inside of an always block do not accurately model the behavior of real hardware it should and it should not be done. The one exception is to carefully add delays to the right hand side of a non-blocking assignment, which will accurately model transport delays, generally at a cost of a slower performance. Adding delays to any sequence of continuous assignments or modeling complex logic with no delay inside of an always block and driving the always block outputs through continuous assignment with the delays, both accurately model inertial delays and are recommended coding style for modeling uh, combinational logic. Thank you very much for listening. Um,